So we here with Mr. Bill Clemens, who um, he's going to be performing here at the Detroit Bass Fest here shortly, and uh, hopefully we can get a little bit of footage of that. Uh, welcome to the Detroit Bass Fest. How you feeling, man? How's it treating you so far? I'm thrilled to be here, and uh, as as is the case everywhere, the bass playing community here is marvelous. Dig. Bass players are a different breed, and we are. Uh, Definitely a uh, self-supporting lot. Now, I had the pleasure of meeting you earlier tonight, and I asked you, I was like, Bill Clements, man, the guy that plays with one arm, and he was like, yeah, that's me. And I was like, I've seen so much material and heard so much material from you, and I was, uh, I was just proud to meet you tonight here at the Bass Fest. Um, when did you start playing the bass and why? Well, I mean, that's, I think, uh, I think that can be summed up in one word and that's uh, chicks. <laughs> uh, when, I was, when I was a teenager, um, I, think, I think when you're an adolescent you start discovering music for yourself and you start making decisions about what music you like apart from what records your parents have, you know, and uh, around the time I got my first radio and started listening to the the infamous rock and roll radio stations. Uh, I just happened to notice the stuff at the lower end, like at Rush and Yes and Zeppelin and stuff like that. Stuff where the bass was like a had a it was an instrument that had its own personality distinct from the guitar. And uh, it had, it's worth, worth mentioning that when I was growing up, every kid on the block played the electric guitar and wanted to be in deep, wanted to be uh, Randy Rhodes or uh, you know in Deep Purple or what have you. And you can't have six guitar players in a band. So the fact that I already knew some really good guitar players combined with the fact that I was interested in music but had a very uh, distinct low end presence, very logical. I mean, don't want to do what everybody else does, so play the bass. Yeah, okay. Let's and I, and I got to say, quite frankly, once I got hold of the instrument, I mean, I was immediately in love with it. I mean, uh, everything about it. You know, I'm still nuts for it. the same. It's like if I find a pair of pants that fits really good, I want five of them. You know, so I'm always looking for a new key bass, a new, even though I got key basses, I got J basses. You know, I think most bass players understand what I'm talking about. So, um, did you have any influences on the bass guitar? Anybody? I, th I think if I, if I just listed all my influences, it would be the same box as everybody ticked off. It was, it was a no who, the notable players in the 70s and 80s. You know, those are all the guys who influenced me. And, you know, you know them, I know them. Um, it, just, if I was playing a Rickenbacker, uh, you'd know who I liked. You know, I just, I, I managed to. Uh, find instruments that none of my gods have played yet, so you can't go and be, oh, he wants to be that guy. So, yeah, but I mean, all the cats that everybody liked, Rocco Presti and Jaco Pistorius, um, those are the guys I probably just by happenstance happen to sound the most like, just because of the physics of what I do has a very percussive nature to it. But I mean, I'm pretty much like anybody who's any good on any instrument. I mean, I like Astro Pizzola, but I don't play accordion, so, you know. Did. Okay, um, how do you play, man? I, I noticed that you have a uh, prosthetic left, right hand. Right, and I'm wearing that now, uh, but I don't wear it when I play because it just gets in the way. It does. Have you ever played with it? No, um, it's never really. What I was developing with my left hand was so far out in advance of anything I could possibly cobble together using a prosthetic that, it, you know, it would be like taking two steps backward just for the sake of using it. You know, I, I quite frankly, I wear it in photos and stuff like that because everybody loves Cyborg Bill. But it, 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 quite frankly, it's painful to wear, it's awkward, and it just gets in the way. So as soon as I hit the stage, it goes by the wayside. Okay, well, then we're just going to take a look at your performance here at the Detroit Bass Press right quick. Let's take a look at it right quick. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so uh, that is amazing what you do with just that left hand, also known as the fret hand for us right hand, the bass players. Right. It is amazing what you do. Um, I got, my left hand got tired just watching you. It's like <laughs> all day long, you just non-stop. And, and it ain't just simple stuff. It's, I mean, you going all over that place, man. How did, what do you do to, to just to keep that stamina like that? I play all. Well, I mean, I, I you can look at it in a couple ways. I mean, I'm either cursed or blessed in the fact that because, blessed. well, in in the fact that uh, because I experience the amount of pain that I do on a continual basis, um, I always ever even from the time I had got out of the hospital, always resorted to the instrument as a way to um, escape from that. So. Um, I do have a pathological knee. In fact, I feel nervous because I'm not practicing now. Because I don't have a bass in my hand right now. Amazing, you hear that bass players? That's how you get good. You just keep on practicing and and, and keep playing. Let well, me I mean, and the thing is, and I'll make the distinction, not everyone is gonna have something that drives them to do it uh -huh. as many hours a day as I do. But when you have uh, a, uh, a situation like I do, where um, there really is no, uh, Alcohol and drugs are not going to provide any kind of meaningful solution to it. Uh, the, the physical act of doing something, accomplish some, accomplishing something, is really the only thing that is, is, is effective in combating my situation. Both, the, both in terms of post-traumatic stress syndrome and, the, and, the, and the, what is called chronic regional pain syndrome that I have. 
So man, I ain't want to keep you. I want to let you go back and enjoy the bass fest. Uh, we got to see Ralphie Armstrong do a little bit of something. That was a treat. Um, I've seen you doing stuff on in Bass Player Magazine, your albums and stuff. You get great reviews on a lot of different bass related sites and stuff like that. Um, if, if we wanted to just go directly to you and check out a bio and listen to you some listen to your music, where can we go? Well, uh, Reverb Nation, there's a Bill Clements page there, and I'm, I'm easy to reach on Facebook. And, and, and what name should we search for? Just, just Bill Clements, and uh, you know, I, I'm hard to miss. Uh, I stand out in the lineup, I'm distinguishable from most of the other Bill Clementses. So, yeah, look me up, I'm, I'm easy to get hold of. Is there anything you'd like to say in closing at this beautiful day in Detroit? Well, I'd just like to thank uh, the venue. I'd like to thank uh, Les Colley for organizing the event. I, it was great to see all the all my bass brothers here in Detroit and my buddies Jocko and Doug Johns. And a uh, rare treat to have people like Nate Watt and uh, Ralphie Armstrong running around. Uh, I would just encourage everybody in the bass playing community to uh, look for events like this and really get out and support them because that's the way there will be more of them. When I was a kid learning, there was nothing like this happening in Michigan. And uh, I think that uh, there's an incredible concentration of, con of talent in the Midwest. And I think there's no reason that we should be overshadowed by either coast to the degree that we are. So I think the more uh, people are aware of what's happening in the Midwest, the more we'll have opportunities to uh, showcase our various talents. Okay, and on behalf of Detroit Bass Players, I'd like to thank you, Bill Clement, for hanging out with us. Anytime. <laughs>